All right, so now that he's hung up, we've raised him up there, tied him off. Uh, the two leg, this would be up here like that, kind of like a straight V. Uh, one leg, he kind of is a little off center, but it doesn't matter. Uh, first thing I do is you can start right here. On that leg, you're going to have to be careful so that you don't cut that tendon. All right, but on this leg, it doesn't matter, really. So take a circle around. Multiple ways to do it. Like I said, I've seen people do it from the, you know, hang it by the neck and cut down that way. I kind of do it this way. It's always the way I was taught. I think it's a little easier. All right, so I'm going to move on with just doing the circle around both of these legs. And uh, we'll get back to you. I'll, I'll show you how to finish up this rear leg and then start pulling it down. All right, so after you get the ring around, we got the ring around both legs. Uh, you're going to just, I started cutting here. I'm going to actually see if I can use the gut to turn this around. And let's see if I can do it. Nope, doesn't look like it. All right, so I'm just going to cut up the height of his leg. All the way up until I hit that circle. From there, start skinning them out like this. And I wrap it right around his leg. And I'll pull this side up around the back. Do the same on the other side. And then you can pretty much start pulling the hide right down the rest of the body. Uh, we'll catch you back up when we get to the back of the back. Alright, so we got the legs. We fold them over the back. And the, the, if you look at this side, I don't know if you can see hold on. That side's like completely empty on the front there a little. So you just pull and keep going down this, pulling the hide away from the body, cutting it out. This is a little bit trickier part when you get to the butthole or tail. So what you can do is just keep pulling on this puppy. Try not to nick the hide, especially if you're uh, thinking about getting a tan or anything like that. You want to try not to get meat on there. Ooh, slice through that. Sorry. Right. That didn't hurt nothing. Alright, so you're at the tail here. This is part of his butthole left. Let's switch me out now. Too. There you go. Thank you. This is why I say I don't really deal with it like other people do. You can just cut it right there and bring it out with the rest of this that you bring out here. I'll get that out. The big, big part I want to show you here, I'm just going to cut through this room. To show you that when you get to the tail, I don't know, it's kind of hard for you to see there. Um, but we're at the tail right there, you can feel it's real hard. You can pull down on his tail and uh, use your knife just to cut through part of that little cartilage or bone. And from there, you're still just straight on the course. Keep pulling down the hide and keep shaving a little bit. We'll get back to you when we get down to the front shoulders. All right, so we're kind of down to the front shoulders here. Um, now typically, uh, you know, a buck that you're gonna get mounted, something like that, trophy class buck, don't split below this, this V that you made. Don't try to cut any holes, don't do anything in that front part. Um, if you decide you're gonna do a Texas mount, something like that where the hide isn't really useful, you're gonna do a skull mount, you can go ahead and split down through this and split down through the front legs to peel it off easier. And you can do the same for the head if you're not worried about a mount for the hide or whatever. Alright, so as you can see we got all of the hide off. Uh, now we're going to start to quarter some of the meat and stuff like that. Uh, first I'm going to go after the back straps right here next to the spine. I'm just trimming some of this fat down so it makes it easier to see. You can see there's a pretty good layer of fat on this deer. And uh, throwing it in the scrap out there. I just trim this up to make it a little easier for myself. You don't have to. Uh, it just makes it easier to see, like I said. 
Alright, and then it's going to be a little awkward because of how he's bent here. But basically start right at the bottom of these legs. You can see where the legs cut in. Right here. Kind of start in that area there along the spine. You can see the spine. It's a whiter, hard spot. So start next to it on one side. Follow it all the way down. Just follow on like that, right along the spinal column. Bring it all the way down through. Through. Keep following. And I get down right about there in between the shoulder blades. You actually stop a little shy of that, but that works out well right there. And then here I kind of try to start going back up, tilt my knife across, and bring it back through like that. And that's going to be the start of it. Uh, probably what you want to do first is let's uh, remove those inner straps just so we don't cut through them on the back side. I gotta remove some stuff so we'll get back to you in a minute when I uh, am ready to take out those inner straps. Here on. Alright, so I'm gonna take these inner straps out. You can see I cut them a little bit. Kinda in a hurry earlier. It happens. No big deal. It's still gonna be cleaned out the butthole a little bit there. So what I start to do is I just try to come up here and same thing, you're gonna follow the inside of the spine right up through there. I'm trying to get all the meat If you cut into your leg or something, that's alright. No big deal. Kind of hard to see it probably there. But, and then I'm going to follow the inside of the rib cage. How the curve goes around a little bit. Once you do that just a smidge, you can get up top here. Kind of pull down on it. And as you pull down, just flick your knife along that spine. And those inner loins will come right out or the sweet meats or tenderloins, whatever you want to call them. And then what we're going to do with these guys right now, you see this, that, it's, and that's the most tender, sweet meat that you're ever going to get out of a deer. And uh, we're going to take these guys, we're going to throw them in a bag, uh, save them up for right now, until we'll uh, we'll go home, clean them up some more, get them, get them ready to be, freeze them, whatever. Uh, but we're just going to throw them into a bag right now and keep them separate, throw them in the cooler and take them home. All right, back to the back strap. I want to make sure I did that. That way, if you cut through this, you're going to cut through a lot of your back strap, your inner loins, your tenor loins. Uh, so, like I said, you cut here, cut down along the spine, cut right below the leg here, and then you got to kind of follow uh, part of this rib cage. Kind of starts back here. Uh, you got to be a little careful with your fingers, your fingies. Uh, but you're going to follow along these bones. You can see I'm trying to get as close as I can pretty much. That way you're not wasting any of the good meats. You don't want to really waste a lot of meat on any deer, but especially the, te the tenor one and back strap. And you can see there's not much there that I'm missing. It's just straight bone. The bigger the deer, the bigger the back strap. All you do is continue that, follow that all the way down until you get towards the neck, and then you're just going to simply cut it out at the bottom and repeat on the other side. This is going to be some of your best meats. Cut them in one inch thick steaks or whatever, marinate them up with whatever you like to marinate them in, throw them on a grill. Can't wait, looking forward to it. All right, so here's uh, what we have left so far. You can see how I took the back straps out, down right to the bone, pretty clean, no meat left. Next, I'm just gonna take these front shoulders. Uh, they're not really attached by anything, but other than ligaments and stuff. So pull it out away from the rib cage. Start cutting down here by the brisket. Work your way around. And uh, I'm also gonna just come down here take a little bit of neck meat with it. You can see that kind of comes off pretty simply. 
The hard part always is trying to catch it before it hits the floor. There's a lot of tendons in this neck meat, but it makes for good roast if uh, people like to do that or you can split some of it up and like triple, quadruple grind it so there's not a lot of stuff in there. And that's pretty much your, your front quarter there. Uh, eventually you gotta you know, go down and take it all off shoulder blade and bone. Chop it up, I grind this. Uh, some people will argue with me, you don't, whatever, because it's tendon. Uh, like I said, I just grind it, grind it again, get as much off, grind it, grind it again, grind it again. And your grinder will pull the gristle and stuff out as well uh, from also what you cleaned off. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this other one, uh, and then we'll show you how to take a rear quarter off. And we're pretty much done. Uh, we'll probably pick you know meat out of the rib cage, stuff like that. Uh, but we won't show you that. It's pretty tedious, and uh, you got the basics now. That's all you need for now. Stay tuned, JT Outdoors. We'll show you uh, the last hind quarter, and then you should pretty much know how to take care of your deer. All right, so rear quarter. Uh, it's kind of nice the way I hung this. I can pull down on it really effectively. Uh, start cutting right here along that tailbone, basically. You also need to make sure when you come around here, there's some little weird bones you got to follow here. You can feel them with your knife and you just kind of go around them. And then come down to the middle of the butt cheek. Glutamus maximus, whatever you want to call it. Just like ours, I guess. And I just kind of cut that so that it it's a little easier to pull on. Uh, your main goal is to get down in here. The more you can pull on it, the easier it makes. You can see how that's separating there. This is what you're looking for, is this ball joint. You gotta separate that, so you get your knife down in there. You doll up knives, butcher and deer, that's for sure. So. Uh, you gotta kinda get in there and try to cut around the ball joint to cut all the ligaments. And then there's also a ligament at the top of it, which I think I've already pretty much got through there. Uh, like I said, the more you can pull on it, the better. It's kinda hard with it swinging, but that's all right. All you do is try to get around that. From every angle. There we go, now I made it through it. You can cut a little bit of meat away. It's still working around the ball joint. Oh, heard that sound. That means I'm through. There we go. And then you can come up here next to the tailbone. And get around there a little bit so you can see it maybe better. Get up here next to the tailbone. Make sure you're not losing a bunch of meat back here on this backside. I didn't lose very much there. Um, and follow the contours right around. Sometimes you got to kind of hold this hand pretty, pretty steady so that you don't drop it. But there you go. It's a huge chunk of meat. There's basically only one bone that runs down through the middle of it. You can separate it, turn this into roasts, turn it into steaks, grind it. A lot you can do with it, but there's a bunch of good meat right here on the rear leg.